Um, the first two papers shared the best uh, student paper award called the MACT Award. So the first winner of the MACT Award, again, not first, one of the winners of the MACT Award <laughs> is Efficient Constructions of Rigid Matrices Using an NP Oracle by Josh Allman and Liji Chen, and Liji will give the talk. So thanks so much for coming. So I'm Liji Chen from MIT. Today I'm going to talk about my joint work with Josh Allman from Harvard on efficient construction of rigid matrices using an NP Oracle. So first, let's see what is that rigid matrix. We say a matrix M is rigid if it's far away from any low rank matrices in Hamming distance. So that is, we define the following quantity as the minimum number of entries one needs to change to make the rank, to, to make the rank drop from drop, drop, drop to at the most R. For example, if I is the identity matrix, then for, for all R, we can change the N minus R entries on the diagonal from one to zero to make the rank drop to R. That is, this matrix is not rigid as uh, you can, it's, it's, it's not rigid. On the other hand, a random N by N matrix is very rigid with high probability. Uh, and this can be proved by a sim simple counting argument. So this notion was first introduced by Lasby Valiant in 1977 to study arithmetic circuits. He showed that if we can construct a, a rigid matrix in the, in the high rank and the low arrow region, then we will have lower bounds against the linear size and the log n depth arithmetic circuits. And then later, Red Barf showed that constructing rigid matrices also have applications in communication complexity. Specifically, the lower bound is for the, the communication analog of polynomial time hierarchy, which is called PHCC. And as we know, proving lower bounds against linear size log n depth arithmetic circuits or constructing hard function for PHCC are both notoriously hard open, hard open question for decades. And we know a random matrix is rigid with high probability. Um, but that's not very interesting because we also know random functions are hard. So the goal here is to construct them without randomness. Then we will have explicit functions which are hard for the both two cases and they will imply breakthrough lower bounds. The usual goal is to find a polynomial time mach machine M such that it will output a family of rigid matrices. We almost achieved this for red bar of rigid matrices but with an NP oracle. Nonetheless, this is still the first non-trivial construction of a bar of rigid matrices, and we have a few lower bounds from it. I will talk about them later. But first, let me review some previous works on this line. Um, here's, this is the reminder of the parameters of a bar of rigid matrices. The first, the first classical argument is the untouched minor argument. This has a running time in P which is great, but it's not as rigid as for the requirement. And also you can just do a brute force to de-randomize the random construction. This has the optimal rigidity, but also the running time is not, is not good. It's exponential in R squared. Ah, it's the rank here. And there are also uh, some, there also are recent work by Goldreich and Tao on the rigidity of a random zero one topless matrix. This gives you a running time of single exponential but it's also not as rigid for the requirement. There are also some conditional constructions assuming some circuit lower bounds and that, and that algebraic dimension approach which require very large fields. In this, in this talk, we are, we are going to focus on unconditional construction over constant size finite fields as they are required for the circuit lower bounds and the communication complexity application. So here's our new results. We show that there's a constant delta greater than zero, such that for all constant epsilon and the constant size finite field F, there's a P, P to the NP machine M, such that for infinitely many Ns, M outputs a matrix M, such that M is delta times N square distance away from any matrices with at most rank two to log N to one fourth minus epsilon. 
as you can see, this rank parameter is much larger than the requirement by Rasboros. And also, it's uh, much larger than any polylog function, but it's smaller than a polynomial. So to compare with the previous results, we can see plugging the, plug in the parameter we can achieve. The first one is, is not as rigid, and the second one has a huge running time comparing to a polynomial. And the third one is also not rigid, and uh, not as rigid, and uh, has an exponential running time. Also, I want to remark that we take a very different approach from the previous works. Previously, people basically focused, fixed a matrix and then used some combinatorial or algebraic method to prove the rigidity. But here, we actually first assume that no construction works, and then we use some com complex complexity theory ideas, including PCPs, to derive a con contradiction. Then there must be some construction which works. So we proved by contradiction. Contradiction. So, as an application, the first app application is to prove lower bounds for PHCC. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, I don't have time to define it. But it's uh, like the communication analog of uh, polynomial hierarchy. And it was a very hard question to prove lower bounds against them. It was even open whether e to the np is in PHCC, or even e to the np is in AMCC which is the communication complexity analog of Arthur Merlin. And by combining the results of Red Borough and uh, our new construction, we immediately have a separation that e to the np is not in PHCC. Indeed, as you can see, our, our, our rank here is much larger than the requirement. So taking advantage of that, and with a padding argument, we can also show that for any super constant function alpha, time two to the log n to alpha n with an NP oracle is not in PHCC. So we can go all the way down from exponential to something slightly more than quasi polynomial. So as an, another application, we also have new depth to linear circuit lower bounds. So the question is very simple. You have a linear transformation M, and you want to compute it with a depth to linear circuit like this. So given an input x, the output is just y equals m times x. It's a linear circuit. And each gate computes a F2 linear combination of some gates from the previous layer. And there's three layers, input, middle layer, output. That's it. And we measure the size by number of wires. We can say that for every possible matrix, it has an n square over log n depth two linear wires, depth two linear circuits. But a random one also achieved this complexity. But in terms of expi explicit constructions, we only knew, we only knew a, few a few results. For the Hartmut matrix, we know it requires n, log, n times log n wires for a depth two linear circuits. And it was improved by two n times log n square for error correcting code. Using our new construction together with that connection between rigid matrices and the depth to linear circuit lower bounds, we show that there's a family of matrices constructible in P to the NP, which requires n times two to log n to one fourth number of wires to compute for depth to linear circuits. So the extra factor beyond the trivial M bound is much larger than any, any polylog function. So now I'm going to try to give you an overview of how it works. So basically, it's like constructing rigid matrices with algorithms from fine grain complexity and also PCPs. So first, we want to make a change of perspective. We, we will now think about low rank matrices as a circuit class. So what do I mean? So given a matrix M of rank R, so that is M equals A times B for two matrix A and B of, of, of certain dimensions. And also, M can be viewed as a choose table of a function on two to log n bits. That is, F can be, that is, we can think about F has a circuit of size n times r. So to evaluate, evaluate this circuit, we just compute the Fij as the inner product of the i's row of A and the j's column of B. 
And now our goal here is just to prove that certain average case lower bound against this special secret class. Because if we have a function which cannot be approximated by any low rank matrices, by definition, this function is, is rigid. So now, here is how we appeal to Williams' algorithmic approach to circuit lower bound. Uh, Williams, in a, in a famous work, shows that non trivial circuit analysis algorithms can be used to prove circuit lower bound. Okay, so, okay, what are the corresponding circuit an 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 analysis questions in all circuit, in all settings? We can ask stratifiability, which is simply that given A and B, is A and B con containing a one, or is that the zero matrix, matrix? And also we can ask the counting question, like how many ones in A times B? Um, by a written, written result by Chen and Williams, they show that when the rank is small, the corresponding sharp counting algorithm can actually be solved in non-trivial time much fast, faster than n square. If you are familiar with uh, fine grain complexity, this is actually just the count, counting OB question over F2, right? So now the idea has to use Williams' approach to turn the above algorithm into lower bound, and we will have the construction. So the big picture is, is as follows. First, we assume all construction don't work, that is, all P2MP machines can only output non-rigid matrices. And then we use sharp set algorithm to speed up every language in n times to the n. If this is possible, then clearly we contradict the non timid time hierarchy, and we're done. So the first attempt, so let's see the first attempt. at L to be a very hard language in n times to the n, which is not in n times to the n by n. This language is a, is a, you, you, it, it's, exist by the n time hierarchy. Then we fix an efficient verifier V for L with roughly two to the n length proof. Then the p 2 machine is just works as follows. Let capital N to be the two to the n by two. Then on input one to the capital N, it outputs an n by n matrix which corresponds to the lexicographically first proof of V on one to the n. This matrix contains capital N squared bits, which is just two to the n. And you can do this by a binary search with the help of, uh, with the help of NP Oracle. Remember, we assume that n outputs non-rigid matrices for all large enough n, for the sake of con con contradiction. This means Vn's first proofs are approximated by low rank mat matrices, because they are not rigid. And then we can fix the verifier to be an efficient PCP verifier with only O1 queries. Now we have the following attempt. We guess we, f we want to solve L faster than two to the N to derive a con con contradiction. So we guess that low rank matrix M. And then we try to estimate the acceptance probability of V given M as an oracle using the sharp set algorithm dis dis discussed before. And then and we'll accept if the, if the probability is greater than one half, if all estimations greater than one half. If all estimations are correct, then by the PCP soundness, on one to, if one to the n is not in L, then we must reject all possible oracles, including the low rank matrix, matrix, matrix we guessed. And by, by the previous promise, if one is in the n, if, if, if one to the n is in L, then there exists a low rank matrix M approximating the lexicographically first proof, and we want, we want to accept that to make, our, to make our algorithm correct. Okay. But the problem is that M only approximates a correct proof. So what if V only queries where they differ? In that case, V can still think that M is wrong and reject it. The catch here is that we can use that smooth PCP, who will query all positions in the proofs uniformly at random. Therefore, if M only differs by a constant, small constant fraction from, from a correct proof, M will still make V accept with high probability. Because in most cases, V will query correct, correct positions. The second issue is more serious, because V, without, v to the M is actually a verifier with low rank matrix and, as oracle. It, 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 it may not be a low rank matrix itself. 
So to solve this question, we actually knew many involved technical details. You can check the paper. But I, I do want to show you uh, one very cool technical lemma involved in, 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 the, in the proof. So here's one very cool technical lemma, which is proved by bootstrapping low rank approximations. So we, we show that if all P2MP machines can only output non-rigid matrices, then two to the n time has easy witness. This means that if one to the n is in L, then there exists a small circuit C such that V to one to the n, C always accepts. So instead of searching for all oracles, you only need to think about low, like small size, small size circuits. To prove this lemma, we have to use a local decodable and a very efficient error correcting code. So we first we will construct many P2MP machines, M1, M2, et cetera. Oh, if you are familiar with Ryan's approach before, you may understand why we need such a lemma. But if you didn't see it, you can talk, talk to me offline. I will tell you why. So the, we will construct many P2MP machines, M1, M2, et cetera. And the machine M1 will output the error correcting code version of O1, where O1 is the first proof of V on input 1 to the N. So by our assumptions, we know that the output of M1 can be approximated by a low rank matrix A, A1 times B1, which is, which is actually a two to the N by two size circuit, if you, if you remember. Then we can actually combine the local decoder of, of the error correcting code together with this circuit to get a two to the N by two size circuit for O1. That is, we can show O1 has a small circuit, but not, but not so small. But, but we don't need to stop here. We can make another matrix M2, which outputs the encoding of A1 and A2, uh, and B2, B1, which is the concatenation of A1 and B1. So again, by our assumption, we know the output of M2 can be approximated by A, A2 times B2, which is actually a two to the N by four size circuit. Then combining everything together, with the local, de local, de decodable code, local decoder of the ECC, we actually can show O1 has a two to the n by four size circuit. Then we just do it again and again. Then we'll show O1 has a very small circuit. And then we can plug it in to prove our theorem. So to summarize, we gave the first non-trivial construction of a reservoir of rigid matrices with an NP oracle. And there are plenty of, of, of consequence following that. And we use some key properties of low rank matrices. We, we use the faster sharp set algorithm for it. And we also use the property that they are actually lo locally de decodable uh, re re representation of the truth table. We also rely on a very efficient constructions of PCP smooth PCP proximity in the local de decodable code. So there are a few open questions I, I want to talk about. So first, can we make use some other properties to prove stronger lower bounds? Second, because we have used smooth PCP proximity, can we utilize other PCPs like robust PCP proximity? Third, can we improve the rank from the current two to log n to one fourth to something close to one, maybe two to the log n to one minus, ep one minus epsilon. We, we, believe it, we believe it's possible, but there are some technical details which prevents us to improve that. So that's all. Thanks. Any questions? OK, questions? So, so what are the technical details that, that prevent you from getting, you know, the exponent one minus epsilon? Uh, so actually, so as you can see in this construction, in, as you can see in, in this construction, the later machines actually has to run a, a larger time. So that's actually a trade-off between, the, between the, 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 run, the running time of this machine 
and the size of the circuit. So we have to do some trade-off. And somehow, after the trade-off, we can only get like uh, one foot. Okay, any other questions? Uh, smooth is enough. Uh, you mean this reference? Uh, yeah, I guess I guess so. Uh, yeah, but this is like the reference we use in the paper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think you are right. Uh, but we. But uh, we didn't find like a very like e explicit reference on that construction, so we just use that. But I, I think you are right. Okay. Um, any a final qu quick question? Or I think we're done. Okay. Well, let's thank Li Ji again. <laughs>